Hello and welcome to the Northern Myths Podcast, where we explore the myths and legends of Northern Europe from an archetypal perspective. I'm Luke DeWolf. And I'm Dan Larrabee. Today, we're excited to present an interview with Alexei Belkin from the band Otava Yo. They're a Russian band, a folk band. They've been around for quite a long time, and they've got a lot of really great music videos, which is how I discovered them uh, initially. And uh, we're excited to connect with Alexei and talk with him. Uh, I'm really excited, Dan. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. His uh, He really excels in the uh, art form of music video, which is sort of a... It's weird because when I was a kid, it was like the art form for, for music, like you turn on... MTV or in Canada, much music. Uh, I don't think either one of those channels really plays music anymore, uh, at least music videos. But uh, then we have Otava Yo with like, not just like pretty good videos, incredible, critically acclaimed, uh, you know, awarded music videos. And if you watch them, you can see that they're some of the best music videos out there. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we're going to include the the link to a whole bunch of their their videos. A, a great starting point. Uh, lots of great themes and elements that they're playing with. And and Alexei is actually the director for for most of the the videos there. Um, and th their music in general is also really quite great. Uh, you know, if if you've uh, paid it, seen the some of our other guests on uh, on our show, such as Tuomas uh, Rona Kari Shaman Violin or Einar Selvik with Wardruna, you know, they're they're similar veins of music, not exactly the same, but uh, kind of getting into this kind of folklore and uh, and music from from past traditions and things like that. Plus, a lot of cool uh, semi contemporary kind of things, and uh, you know, they're they're just a great mix and. Uh, and we're we're big fans of Otavio, and uh, so we're we're really excited to get to talk to Alexi. Absolutely, I I can't wait. And before we get him on, uh, just a quick word about how you can support the show. The best way you can do that, if you like, is on our Patreon. And if you'd like to connect with us, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the links are in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications if you are on YouTube. We'd also like to give a shout out to Grimfrost. They're our favorite source of authentic Viking products and modern apparel. And if you're a fan on the of the show, we're uh, we're sure that you'll find something that uh, that you'd like. So go to Grimfrost.com to join the horde. And now it looks like we've got Alexi ready to call in. So let's get him on the show. Hi, Alexi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. You are welcome. Thank you for inviting. Yeah, and uh, we were just wanting to maybe start off with, uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and about Otava Yo? Uh, I myself, a uh, non-professional musician, self-educated. I am 45 years old. And right now I'm in Latvia with my family, having a two weeks quarantine <laughs> after passing the border. And I'm playing in Otava Yo, I think, well, from the beginning. So I don't remember, 18 years, probably, yeah. I think I remember you had your 17-year your anniversary concert just a little while ago. Is that, I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when we started to count, nobody remembered when we started to play. Actually, we used to play on the streets in St. Petersburg, like uh, street musicians, for, uh, I think, a couple of years. And only after those two years of playing on the streets, we decided, uh, well, we've got a band, so maybe we should name it. And we decided, okay, let's let's try to be Otava Yo, for example. <laughs> now, what is what does Otava Yo mean? Uh, to be honest, uh, not for the not for all Russian people, Otava Yo sounds. Uh, like something they understand uh, because most of people think about at Ottawa, the Canada and it's totally different because Ottawa in, in Russian it means uh, there is some kind of agricultural uh, sentence about a grass which will be growing right after you cut it actually it's a ability of any kind of grass so you cut it and then it Grows. It's kind of regeneration. So and uh, Atava, it's in Russian, 
this uh, ability of grass to make regeneration. So, and yo, it's just a letter from our alphabet. But together it sounds pretty cool. I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a great name. And, uh, you know, for, for us uh, English speakers, uh, you know, maybe not knowing quite that history, that, that's a really interesting name. Actually, I know that in Finland they have this uh, word Ottawa. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, some, something in the sky, some... The Great Bear Constellation, yes. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. yeah we, you, you, you may not know, we, we actually... We, we read the Finnish Kalevala on our on our show, and we were we were just talking about the the Otava constellation uh, ah. just just the other day, actually. Okay, not every I, I think not every Finnish people uh, Finnish person have read the Kalevala. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's an interest. It's an interesting connection. That's all. It, 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 was there was there any connection when you were kind of coming up with that? Uh, no, I, I used to listen lots of Karelian and the Finnish folk bands. I used to love Vertina and Müllerit, if you know. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I, I do. Yeah, they I, used, yeah, they used to, to sing some songs made from Kalevala, um, but this is the only connection that I've heard. No, that's, that's still a great connection, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty neat. But actually, 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 St. Petersburg, it's really close to Karelia, like 50 kilometers, and Karelia starts. So, and we have many Karelian people and some bands who play Karelian music. So, and the music is quite uh, kind of close to Russian music. I mean, the melodic and some instruments. So the gusle, which I played, the same instrument there is in Finland and those kantele. Yeah, kantele, yeah, kantele, they have kantele. So. Yeah, yeah, great, great connection there. Um, the, um, well, uh, never, never mind, I, I I lost my my thought there. That's okay. Um, so so the band has been going for uh, 17, 18 years, something like that. And you've recently kind of surged in in popularity uh, in in a lot of uh, respect due to some of your great uh, videos. How does how has that been? Kind of getting more of a, a global audience and a, a really popular uh, popular few songs. Uh, I don't think it, it's kind of difficult to talk about. But is it popular or not? But what what I can say yet there is there is statistic in YouTube, and I can see that we have lots of subscribers and viewers from all around the world, and like half of viewers they are from Russia, but the other half from America, Germany, Ukraine, all over the world, and this is kind of interesting for me because I when. When, I, when we were making those videos, we didn't think like, okay, let's explore Russian music all around the world. No, we just were making it for fun. Okay, let's have fun. And we have nice music. Why don't we make a nice video? And I didn't expe accept, expect that so many people all around the world, without understanding any word which we've seen, they would understand the message that we have. And message is uh, kind of uh, easy to understand, you know, it's uh, be ironic to yourself and enjoy the great nature and enjoy the relationships, enjoy folk music. And it's kind of basic values for all the people all around the world. And this is the most interesting thing that I never thought that it's going to be like that. So it's great. That's awesome. Is that sort of the, like, the mission of the band to uh, sort of spread that message of enjoying life and relationships and all that kind of stuff? You know, if if you would ask me the, that question twenty years ago, I would say yes, we've got a mission, and the mission is blah blah blah, lots of words. But now I understand that there is no any mission. There is a way of your life, way of uh, life of our band. Somehow, of course, we have different people. This one likes, I don't know, to play the guitar and to sing Om Mani Padme Hum. Another one, he surf in a huge uh, museum and he is uh, interested in 
oriental stuff and but when we come together there is some something between us and we start to play music and it connected us and all other things which we were thinking about it important they are beside and and that's it <laughs> so and we having fun of course we are trying to when we make when we make song we are trying to think okay so maybe this is too too much okay let's keep it calm but not because okay not because we are thinking okay we need lots of viewers we need that people will uh, buy our music no just to please ourselves so i think that we are kind of uh, middle people <laughs> and uh, lots of middle people also joins our community with our music so maybe like that i'm I, probably i'm mistaken but the big the biggest idea if we will have fun on our rehearsal room playing music so this is the best we can do and after that we go on stage and play concert and we are having fun on stage and people having fun so everybody having fun i think we are like uh, maybe it's bad to say but we are like an animals which would like to have fun all together because now when we have to communicate with those internet uh, gadgets and uh, we miss so much the real uh, talking shaking hands because maybe i think that people they have to live uh, not separately but but together and this is important and music it it really unites people this i believe in that i i think we agree and and you know since you mentioned the the whole uh, the concerts and the live interaction and all that uh, has it been tough with uh, the whole the coronavirus pandemic uh, i know you guys have done quite a few live streams live shows that seem to have been fairly popular but do, do you miss like the the crowd being there uh to be honest uh, we, I, I i'm not sure are you familiar with our uh, we have youtube show zelenka yes so we started i think two and a half years ago and we started to play concerts live why internet without public and we were getting used to do that i think two three or five uh, editions it was too really difficult just really difficult to play a song and uh, do not see anybody who is enjoying this song but after five months we found ourselves that it's okay for us now so we can play live for internet nobody see we, we don't see any crowd but we still have fun because we play music so when that virus came to the to, to the town um yes it was all concerts were cancelled for everybody so no no live concerts but we have special place to practice rehearsal place we have ability to make new songs we have ability to play live concerts for uh, big amount of people because I know many many friends musician friends who make in lives almost every week and 15 viewers during the show and you know it's but uh, when we make the show it's more than thousands altogether and after that 50,000 maybe during the next week so this is a huge audience actually not at every concert when we play on stage we have so many people and we see that reaction and somehow we feel it of course to play uh, for the real audience like not via computer it's better but as far as we play is we able to meet each other i mean the band and we can play together it's okay but if they would say no you are not able to meet stay at home use zoom for example so I think it will be difficult. Look, the sun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> well, and I mean, it, 
the the concerts you've been doing it well it seems like you you may since you started doing this before the the lockdown maybe that helped uh, a little bit i know what whenever i see one come up the the time zones are, are just right that it's kind of uh i catch it during uh, kind of the the late morning or early afternoon and uh it's always a treat to see when when you have one coming up so that that has been that has been nice that you've been able to to do that um and another thing i wanted to ask about a little bit was uh uh, since you kind of touched on all the variety of musicians that you have coming in, your your music itself also has quite a bit of variety. Like the the difference between Oi Dusio Oi Marusia and Ukoshki uh, Chetri Nogi. What's the English? Um, the, the cat has four legs, four something legs. like that. Those <laughs> those those songs are quite different from each other, but they they all still kind of work, right? So, um, how, how do you how do you guys de- determine what what you are gonna play? Oh, it's. I mean, you mean uh, w- when uh, when we decide uh, to work on a song, right? Yeah, not yeah. on the concert, but yeah, it's difficult. I think this is the most difficult part because when we used to play on the streets, it was so easy. We were playing Celtic music, some jigs, reels, polkas, no singing at all, just playing uh, how we can and without practicing. Like, let's play this tune. Okay, come on. And we start to play, but after a few years, uh, we understood that well, Celtic music is great, but we in Russia we've got our own great music. Let's try to think to play some Russian music, and we started. Of course, we were from from the beginning we didn't dig too much. We were just we were taking the very popular songs and we we're trying to sing them to cheer ourselves but uh, afterwards it was uh, it turned like uh, so we understood what what we what we can do with Russian music and we really enjoyed it but uh, as deeper we were going as so it was more difficult for us to choose which which song will would be next because not every song we could arrange uh, in the way that we would like to so, for example, that the cat has four legs. It's just a song from old Russian movie. It's I don't think it's real uh, folk tune, but nobody knows. It's all tune from the huge cities. But we found a way for it, and we, it's actually it's it's like a cover. It's like tribute, but we found our uh, way, and we enjoyed it, and we say, yeah, why not? But uh, some other time we were trying to make one song, Kazakh song, and we couldn't do anything with that. Because we played, yeah, sounds nice, but something, something wrong. So we are doing something wrong. So and we take this song, okay, let's put it for, for a while, and maybe we will get back to it. And after 10 years, we took this song away. That's a great song. Let's try to play it. And after 10 years, yeah, everything works. So, but, you know, it's, it's difficult. So I ca- I'm reading some books, uh, listening some tunes from internet, some eth- ethnographic. And every time it's like, I don't know, mystery. So there is no system. Just actually, if we like the song and we start to work on it, if it works, so we make an arrangement and we see... And we record it, make video, something like that. But if it, if it doesn't work, so we just put it and find, find for another one. Nothing special. I think it's every folk musician doing something like that. Yeah, that's that's fair, and I mean that that definitely makes makes sense. Uh, and you've got a lot of material to work with, lots of uh, different cultural traditions, a part of Russia, uh, maybe. One thing I'm wondering is why is it important to you to dig into some of these different cultural traditions and 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 bring forth these these songs that are are maybe a bit older from from other um, older cultural um, traditions? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I think this is because of the human nature. If you are getting into some process. If you are normal, so you would be more interested in details. 
So, and now I think we are digging deeper and deeper because we understand much more of the details of Russian folk music, of folk in general. And that's why it's not interesting for us. When we made that Sumetska, for example, those street village fightings, huge success, lots of people watching and lots of public, I think, four times bigger on concerts after this this particular video. Wow. Yeah. And, and we could just, okay, let's continue do the same stuff. Let's find this kind of songs playing the same style and and we'll get uh, bigger success. But it's not interesting. It's much more interesting to go the same direction, but little bit on the side and something different. Try try to something different. And for example, I used to play, I, I, I was studying, this is uh, Russian uh, Rajok. It's kind of uh, part of backpipe, but without a back. So I used to start it, to play it a uh, few months. And there, there was one particular melody for, uh, written specially for this kind of instrument. It's very simple, but it's so difficult. It took me several months to found a way, find a way how to play it. And it was so interesting. After five years, I think, we made uh, an arrangement for this tune and a song but and now I understand that five years ago, if we started to do that, we, we wouldn't get success because we were I I personally I was not uh, uh, in material. I was like a guest in this particular instrument and tune. So it took time. So and the same with the songs. When you go deeper and deeper, so you it's like a microscope. So you see tiny de details which probably most of the people just wouldn't notice. But it's important for you. It's important for us. And that's it. So we are, I think, and when you use those, mi those, those microscopes, you see so many great stuff which you want to work on. So, and it's happening with us right now. Wow. Uh, w which was the song that you did the arrangement for, for that instrument? It's a new one. We just shoot the new video. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, I hope, but I, I saw the materials and it's great. I love it. Oh, so very, very I think, exciting to, to see that. I yeah, so, that. so the new song, I think after two or three months, we will release the video. Wonderful. Yeah, that's great to hear. Looking forward to that. Well, and I know you've used, uh, you've used this instrument in, in quite a few songs uh, as, as well. And, uh, um, I, I really, I really like the kind of the end bit in um, "Do You Love You Wish um, where where you come in with with that instrument. So that that's nice to hear. You got more kind of coming up with that. Yeah, right. Um, and and you mentioned kind of the the binoculars. You made a a, a motion for that anyway. And um, uh, in terms of going in on the details, that is bringing me into a little bit of when you were in Oidusia, um, the I, th I think it's you, you, you're going out with some binoculars, but then you, can, then you see the, the people singing on the, on the rock there, and then the song kind of gets going. Um, are you going something like that with, with that type of shot to, to kind of go into seeing those details? No, it just, you know, when we produce a video and when we working on idea, usually not 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 every scene has so big background. Sometimes it's just an idea. Okay, let's try to. I I, I remember it was like that. So we found a great location, great location with the small island and behind us a small church. And I understood if we will be standing here and only guys singing all together and behind us the rocks, it would be, it would be looking just brilliant. But uh, it's, not, uh, it's, it's too easy to start with that. Let's create something interesting, how we can move there from the city. And the idea with binoculars came to us and we 
decide, okay, so I'm, I'm looking to this and see, oh, wow, guys sitting there. So when I was talking five minutes ago about the details and going deeper to details, it doesn't mean that we were thinking that time, yes, we need to show people that we are going deeper to details. No, it's just, I don't know. Sometimes when you make something, something all the all possible ideas which could come to listener they could be totally different from what you were thinking about at the particular time sometimes people write me guys at this particular song uh, i'm thinking you're thinking about that and i'm interested well that's an interesting idea but it's totally different from what we were thinking about so and it, this is great about any kind of uh, art, I think. No, that's that's uh, that's all right. I I think I was just kind of making that making that connection there. But uh, the the video itself, though, uh, I've I've got a few questions about that actually. Um, mostly because, first of all, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll start with with this. The um, the Oi Dusi Oi Marusia song, um, if, if I'm right, that that's a, a Cossack melody right something um from like kind of the southern regions right and 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 so when you were putting that one together is that the one you were talking about when when you said you, you kind of put that away for a few years or was that a was that a different one no it was different one uh it was on the same album do you love if you uh i don't remember how it will be in english the one with Rocky, jun, 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 jun. the Gelder Rose Berries. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one. Yeah. yeah, that's one. We used to play it ten years ago. I remember at my apartment we were practicing, and I enjoyed the song so much, but we couldn't find a correct beat for it. So we played that way, other way, and nothing was good. And we decided, okay, maybe this song is not for us this time. Okay, let's put it away and after eight years we were, we were working on the album and I look at the list of songs and I see not enough for, for an album we need a couple more and I remember ah oh, yes we have one song let's try to listen I listened sent to other guys and everybody said just a great song let's make it and we uh, meet on rehearsal and it was so fast I think two two uh times two days we were working on this song and it was ready but after eight years of waiting impressive w worth the uh, the wait then yeah 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 that's yeah. good uh okay so so maybe back to um oi Ducio oi marusia so with, with that one uh, i i was wondering a little bit about kind of why that song and why that video in a, and i mean that in a couple of ways uh so, so that one was the the first that I saw of uh, of you guys. Obviously, you said um, Sumetskaya came out first, and that was a an initial boost of popularity. But Oi Dusi Oi Marusia was doing something different. And maybe can you can you tell us a little bit about kind of how that video um, came about and and why that song, something like that. Why that song? Uh, the well, usually how the videos come up. Uh, I choose the song which I like, me personally. And I start to think, well, great song, we need a video. Okay, what could be in this video? I'm listening to this song like about a month, every day, hundreds of times. And some images come to my brain. And... The, the 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 first idea for uh, for me it for ah yeah i remember yeah there is some, uh, one uh, not band choir from moscow and i saw two girl i saw two girls beautifully dancing like those movement very very beautiful and i understood yes i want those two girls dancing in our video in our video, in this particular song, I connected to the girls and they say, no, oh. Oh. we are not able to do that. Some personal stuff, but idea, uh, I enjoyed it so much. So I decided, okay, I'll find another girls 
who will do who who will do the same thing and will and I created something like okay it, it should be the building in the city with the green grass on the top and these two ladies we were shooting from the quadrocopter and they were they are dancing on the top of the some big building I think it was I, I was thinking about something like uh, you know the modern one but we couldn't find that one and we find another roof but it doesn't matter so that was the starting point to start to work on and of on the idea of this particular video after that all those details they came after but from these two girls which actually i think after three years we made a concert with them those two, those two who declined oh and they say yes yes we want to to do that and they they did it and there is i think there is a live video with with them they're so beautiful so that was the starting point Sure, and that particular setting. So you, you mentioned earlier a little bit about the the city, and then going out into the the countryside. Uh, what were you kind of getting at there in terms of because uh, you have this journey of uh, of the what do you call it? Kind of like a, a home still, and that seems to be like a thread throughout the video. Is is there something to that journey that you were trying to explore there? I think we were trying to show that every person who lives in big city, there is something which uh, calls every person from megapolis to the village. And I think that lots of very important things, they came from village and now you saw that that uh, church, wooden church, which is almost uh, almost broken, and nobody goes there. And we went to the church to see it, and it was such a big impression for me. And I thought, what are we doing? You know, we have such a great things all around us, but we uh, put them away and forget about them and this is wrong and when we show to people look look what we've got and everybody wow yeah that's cool so I, I think it was kind of motivation for us to show to people that there are lots of stuff outside of big cities because of course it's very comfortable comfortable to be in a big city all those, I don't know, subways, uh, entertainment places, cinemas, I don't know, fast food, everything. It's so comfortable. But, for example, in March, this March, lockdown, not possible to go anywhere. And we all stay in those boxes at home. And I was like terrified. I'm not going to stay several months in this box i want to go to nature and i think most of my friends were thinking about that the same the same way so that's i think that's why <laughs> so many great uh, locations you know on in all our videos which we want to show to people because it's yeah it's comfortable to to be in a city but it's much more much much more interesting and you feel alive when you're outside of it so that's my the main idea for <laughs> last several years that it's great at least okay not leave okay we understand that most of people have to go to office jobs and you have to be in a city but if you have time go outside of it and look all around you lots of beautiful stuff around us do you think these ideas are maybe uh feeding into why people are really connecting with you? Maybe. Maybe. I think, yes, people, most of people, not most, but some of people think the same. I think, you know, we are, I, I think, uh, human being, it's kind of the simple creature. We, some, sometimes we need to swim 
not in the swimming pool, but in a lake. And it's totally different feeling. And the same, like, you know, I'm sitting now at the beautiful location, just really beautiful. Behind me, the bathhouse all around, the fields, you know, and no people around me. And it's a great feeling. So I go outside, I can, I don't know, do whatever I want to do. And uh, I see great uh, creatures of, I don't know, someone. So great trees. It's impressed me so much. I think the most of people, if, if, you, if you know anyone who will go to the forest and say, no, oh, yeah, forest, ah, and wouldn't be amazed by the, I don't know, great Niagara Falls or any kind of uh, stuff which was made by nature or Gatar, I don't know. I don't think there are such people because everybody uh, enjoys the... It's, I, I understand that it's... Kind of, I am con con I'm confusing, <laughs> but no, I think that no. the nat nature all around us, it's so beautiful and it's better to go to, to nature than to stay in uh, Megapolis. That's a great message. And I know you, you do that in, in a lot of your videos uh, lately. Like It seems like most of them are, are really uh, set out in, in, in nature. And, and that's, that's wonderful that you get the opportunity to, to do that uh, so often. You know, I miss myself because I, I used to live in the suburb of St. Petersburg. It was a small town, but not village, town. But I was uh, living in private sector we call it, so wooden house, and a yard, lots of friends, we were making fireplace every day, so I was living on the street actually, almost in the forest, and it's great background that I have, I miss it so much, so, and I would be honest, most of the locations, I think almost in every video there is a location from my childhood, so, so in Sumetskaya, there is that uh, place for water and a table with when we sit with that uh, watermelon. It's backyard of my friend, which was uh, living nearby. Dusio and Marusia, the guy with the motorbike, uh, he is uh, repairing it. It's my yard when I used to live till 15. Wow. So, wow. you know, I miss those places so much. And when, I, when we are looking for locations, the first, first thing that I think about, okay, I remember from my childhood, there was a football place where we were playing football. Let's go there and see, can we shoot their football or not? We go there, yes, we can. So, <laughs> it's easy. So, uh, this love for nature and, I guess, folklore as well, does that, does that stem from your childhood or was that something that... Uh, came later I don't know you know I always enjoyed nature and so you know I, I was going to of course some days I, uh, I think when I started to work I used to work as an accountant I have graduated the university and started to work and I moved to the city moved to St. Petersburg started to live there, I rent an apartment. But after a couple of years, uh, there was opportunity for me and my friends to rent a house near the St. Petersburg. And we moved there. It was like small community, me and my friends, and we were living there and I enjoyed it so much. And maybe from that time, I was, I understood that uh, countryside is really important for me particular so maybe like that oh no uh wonderful and you, you mentioned your, your friends a fair bit i i keep on seeing the same people in in all your videos too uh are, are that is that like your friends and family that are taking part in those videos as well uh sometimes friends sometimes family sometimes we just for example the last video that we shoot a few weeks ago uh i wrote uh, a message to a couple of people and said guys we need some people who can join the shootings we need some people in 
in one scene. And they say, yeah, yeah, sure, we want to participate. And I think about 60 people came to join us. So now we have, I think we have ability to invite people and they usually would say yes. So, but yes, sometimes I uh, try to use my children if they can, if we need uh, children. So I used my two daughters because it's easier to say them, okay, let's do that and that. And it would be easier than find some other kids and motivate them. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> for sure. Well, and uh, it, it, am I right? Like the, the video for um, uh, Once Upon a Time on a High Hill, was that, was that actually like a, a, a real wedding uh, around that? I, I couldn't quite read everything in the, in the title, but it, it sounded like there was an actual marriage going on there. Uh, look, it was the uh, reconstruction of the real wedding which took place one year before. Our friends, those, the uh, husband and wife, they became, they get, got married a year, a year before, and actually they invited us uh, to participate, just to come to the wedding, but we couldn't, I don't remember why, maybe we had a tour or something like that, but it doesn't matter. And uh, the guy, the husband, Vanya Ivan, he participated in our Sumetska video. He was the second guy, and after when they got married, he sh told me, well, it's such a pity that you couldn't come to my wedding, but there is some video you can look and, and see how it was. And I, I took, a, I don't remember, I think, yeah, I gave him the hard drive and he copied me all his wedding. And I was watching all the evening, everything that they shoot. And it was so beautiful. I saw so many because they were making try they were trying to make kind of uh, ethnographic wedding and there was there was a guy who was shooting just documentary and I enjoyed so much so many diff different details so I told him Ivan you know I would like to make a wedding video and to make a wedding once again a year af after one year if you don't mind you and your wife we would like to shoot your wedding once again. And they say, yeah, sure, okay, it will be the third wedding for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and well, and, and that video, since you mentioned like kind of the ethnographic side of it too, uh, uh, it was all traditional dress. Uh, it looked like it was out in the countryside too. Um, can, maybe can you tell us a little bit more about like the, that setting and the, the traditions that were going into that? Uh, well, if uh, ethnographically it was uh, very very close to the reality which could be, which which we think which which uh, scientists think uh, were happening 200 years ago in Russia, and there the some rituals we used the real ones that was written in books and uh, spreading by words. But it wasn't for us the biggest idea for us to make this video. Actually, for, for me, it was the, the, mo the biggest interest. After, when I was looking at that, that documentary video, I saw two different weddings. First wedding from the side of the husband and another wedding from the side of the wife. And uh, wife, uh, there was one shot when the girls had a party, only women party, and they were crying, dancing, it, it touched me so deep. And then I saw what was the guys, what, what they were doing. And they were having fun, you know, <laughs> relaxing. And I thought, well, that's an interesting idea. It, would, it could be interesting to show the same uh, Th same event from two different sides. What uh, girls doing before wedding, what guys doing before wedding, how they meet. And during all this, we use some ethnographic things. So like the, that uh, entertainment stuff for guys when they struggling, uh, that uh, lifting that weight with the mouth. And for the girls, what they are doing, like they are sitting in the special room, singing sad songs 
like dancing and saying farewell to each other. Of course, now it's I mean, nowadays it's a little bit different because now we live in, uh, we can connect uh, with the, your family at any time. Like you can call and you can visit. It's, but 200 years ago, it, uh, when you get married, you probably would go 200 miles away and would be able to see your family, to see your parents like once in a year. And it was really sad uh, event for a lady. So, but still, that tradition is still alive and we were trying to show it in our wedding video. Of course, it's, uh, we were trying to make it not too deep that time, but uh, some ethnographic uh, guys, they told us, you know, this, is must, uh, th th this video is one of the most ethnographic wedding videos in Russia now, okay? <laughs> Yeah, that's impressive, and uh, well, you know, again, all the all the little things that you're you're talking about here, uh, our 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 audience is going to have to go do some some homework after this. Uh, we'll we'll include the links to all these all these videos here. Um, the 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 main thing that that I kind of see uh, throughout what you're doing is is kind of this connection to the past. Not not only in in this wedding video, also like the shots where um, in in that church again where the the girl stands in front of the mirror but her her dress actually changes and it looks like that uh, that style of dress. Um w what is it about this kind of connection to the past that uh, that you seem to be exploring in all of your videos? What what's important about that? Well, <laughs> that's an interesting question. The was one movie from Woody Allen. I don't remember the name. And it's a great movie because the story was like, there are some community, some people who are very fond of uh, times like 100 years ago, back. And they say like, oh yes, we want to live that time. It's so great. And, and uh, some miracle happened and they Go, they went to the times 100 years ago and then they meet those people that they were uh, dreaming about like they were thinking like yes they are living so great life they're happy and they see those guys they also thinking about uh, uh, 200 years back so i think this is in nature of uh, any people in any person so maybe because Maybe because uh, the most happy time for most of the people is the childhood, which happened already. And you remember it and you remember that you are happy all the time, you know, all bad things, they are disappearing. You, you remember only the great stuff, maybe because of that. And I, what about the ethnographic dress? I think it's much more it's looking better than modern modern stuff so when i see ladies wearing th that great dress or guys wearing those uh, uh clothes ma made from linen i love it when i go to h&m or zara i look it, sorry but the same shit everywhere so maybe maybe because of that i don't know it's like of course it's uh maybe it's too my thoughts i too pink you know too bright and of course probably i'm thinking about that and dreaming about that and uh, it doesn't mean that those times it was like that that i'm dreaming about that right now it was totally different but it was looking great and i think it's not the ba not not bad thing to try to remember what we had and try to keep it because it's great to keep great stuff and use it why not so now i am trying uh i have some ethnographic dress which was made now nowadays and i like to wear it so it's okay but you know it's it doesn't matter actually so it doesn't matter but maybe because uh, maybe because uh i forgot the name maybe we are i 
idealizing what was happening before. So maybe because of that. Do you think there's any anything wrong in idealizing the past? Because uh, I mean, uh, you know, I, I figure folks uh, a few hundred years ago would uh, would appreciate having, say, refrigerators or or something like that, or uh, or other comforts of of modern life, even the things that are you know in in the the big cities and all that. Um, do, do you think there's anything there in terms of uh, you know if if you idealize the past that that might be the um, it might be a step backward to to go in that direction. Oh, let's take the best things from that and from that. We have refrigerators now, and let's put it to our countryside. So let's have a real toilet at the countryside, and let's wear a great great dress that our grand grandparents uh, created for us. So we can, you know, now we can choose and we can keep the great stuff that our parents uh, prepared for us nowadays. So I think it's not a bad, it's not bad, it's just, uh, it's wise. I think we should be wise and it's, uh, you know, now when everything in computer, you can go to Google and find any answer on any question. And try to imagine, like, 50 years ago, it wasn't like that. It was totally different. But people were living, and they were uh, living not like, you know, the guys uh, in, uh, without dress and, you know, that voodoo people. They were living normal life. And I think they were much more, uh, they, they were wiser. And they were, they were more prepared for real life. Now we are so, you know, so chill. <laughs> so I think it's important to remember nowadays and uh, try not to put away all that experience that our parents used to have and grandparents. And when we, when we use the folklore songs, uh, we should understand that before 100 years ago, it was the only way to spread the important things between everybody. Because, okay, there is a situation. The guy married a girl without asking who is she, for example. And after 10 years, they found out that she, she is, a, a, she is a, some kind of sister of him. That it, it used to happen many times in uh, villages many times so they usually ask uh, who are you who was your parents and some some something like that and it was so and uh, the song was created about that why to get uh, to get this information to people guys it's important to know that your wife future wife is not your relative so and so so many situations it was just one example but there are huge uh, number of situations which were uh, written in songs and it was the way to keep the information for the for the second uh, generations for example that sounds like it'd be a pretty fun song about the the brother you know, accidentally marrying his sister i listened to that for sure Sure. Actually, this the, I, I was talking about once upon a time on a high hill. This is yeah. a particular <laughs> yeah. song. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, I, I, neither of us knows uh, Russian quite so good. So some of the the lyrics can be a, a bit a bit tricky. That's that's interesting that that was the the inspiration for that song. Awesome. Um, and and you know that that is a great message in in terms of being wise and 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 to bring the best from the past and and the present uh, that, that's a that's a great uh, perspective so i'm um, glad glad to hear that that's kind of the the way that uh you're you're approaching the music or at least that that's what it sounds like uh so i uh, i don't want to keep you too long it looks like it might be getting a, a a bit dark there but uh you know the i think uh what what we wanted to ask you um one more thing was um, is there anything that you wanted to tell 
kind of more more English speaking audiences, North American audiences uh, about yourselves uh, since you're you're getting kind of this more global reach. You know, I think uh, my words they wouldn't mean anything because all that uh, I was, I think, all those videos that we made, they are telling more than words. So it's great that so many different people from so many different countries they are on the same wave as we are and you know we've been in iran i think three years ago and we played there uh, in some book fair and i was talking to one guy and he told me such terrible stuff about what's happening there terrible and at the same time beautiful and i talked to him and i found out that there are so many uh, the same things that we are thinking about and okay he is he's from Iran and they have difficult uh, political system uh, they, they have difficult life but they say they are the same people that we are the same values for them that for this uh, the, they there, there is the same values for us so it's like it's such interesting thing <laughs> and the most interesting that the music helps to understand that so i don't know i hope i hope that we will be able to visit more countries after all that lockdown and to show that uh, all those political games that everybody is thinking about now they uh doesn't it doesn't mean anything so there is political stuff and there are people and people always f uh, would find a way to communicate and to understand each other and this is the most important thing i think so and i'm really grateful that somehow our videos helps to show our great country in very very attractive way and not only for foreigners also for russian people you know this is very really really great and actually it's like it's not mission but <laughs> now we understand okay we produce the new video we should understand that lots of people would see that so okay let's avoid of showing guys drinking vodka okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know the portraying uh, your own country in a positive light is is that something that you you feel like maybe there there's some some issue there in in terms of uh maybe some some kind of sense of uh you know being being proud of of your country of of being russian i don't think that's a it's a really good uh, feeling when you proud of something you know i'm proud that i'm russian you know somehow i'm russian i love russian culture i i love russian nature but i respect for example i don't know french people finnish people german people they have their own motherlands uh, and they love it the same much as i do and i respect that and i want to understand okay why do germans they love so much their country i should go there and see <laughs> so you know i think the respect to each other it's really important thing because when you try to understand somebody else you could find something really important for yourself also in other culture other religion anything you know iran for me it was like miracle i didn't you know i was going there like a little bit not afraid but you know i've heard so many bad things about iran i went there and you know nice people having fun making jokes they people so great we are the same <laughs>
Yeah, that's uh, that's wonderful. And and uh, you know, may, maybe the maybe I chose the wrong word. Uh, maybe more like um, ap- uh, just appreciating. Uh, you know your your own um, culture and backgrounds and and traditions. Is, yeah, that, is that that, something that's that something nice. Some... That's nice. Uh, that's nice to understand that the right people who start start to appreciate it. Yeah, it's. I don't know, but it's not the main idea. But it's nice, and you know, it's nice when somebody say you, you know, you are good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, always, always nice to hear. I'm sure. Good. Um, well, maybe uh, is there anything in particular that you got coming up you'd like to uh, tell us about? Tell our audience about. We shoot the new video right now. I'm working on uh, on it with my colleague, and this is the most exciting stuff that we have now. We are working on new songs. I have the new instrument, Russian bagpipe. So we've got lots of things to do. I think the the most important thing for every band is uh, is an interest for your work. If you play music and you don't have an interest to your music, uh, it's it's very bad. It's very bad. But if you go to re- to rehearsal and you after it you go home, yes, we made a great song and. This is one of the most great feelings that you could feel. So, you know, we have so many interesting things to do, no matter of lockdown. So, and I hope that we'll be able to uh, spread what we are going to do and to show to people. This is, this is great. Well, that's fantastic. We can't wait for the, uh, for the new video. Yeah, and, I also. Yeah, and, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I also wait, waiting for the new video, you know, because I know that there are, I think, two or three months of really, really hard work because all that editing, colorizing, all that stuff. But it's worth it. Every time when we work on the new video, you know, I am the most involved person from the band in the process, and it it takes lots of time, you know, and power. But I know that it's th- that's worth it. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, your, your videos have been something else. They've, they definitely uh, made an impact for, for me, I, I think, for, for uh, Dan yourself, too. And uh, Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, looking forward to, to what you've got coming out. Uh, all, all your music is, is awesome. Uh, and I, I, I really hope, um, yeah, every, everything goes well in the future and uh, you can get back to, to touring when the, when the lockdown is done. Okay, I hope so. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks again for uh, for joining us today. It's been great to, to talk with you. Is uh, is there any um, kind of social media, any other ways that folks can uh, can get in touch with you if they would like? Yeah, we are everywhere. Facebook. Uh, we have uh, YouTube, Instagram. Just yeah, the, the website. So there is a guest book, and we are not hiding. So er- er- everyone can connect us. Perfect. Well, uh, yeah, thanks again. Uh, it's been uh, great to, to talk with you. Great conversation. Uh, lots of interesting things to think about. Uh, so, so thanks again and enjoy your, uh, your time in, uh, in Latvia and uh, uh, good luck with everything in your future. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Well, Dan, that was something. Uh, that was great to get to talk to Alexia. Really, really great interview. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, that was awesome. I uh, I love hearing how passionate he is about uh, beauty and uh, his own culture, but also cultures from around the world. I, I uh, for me that was like the part where I'm like, this guy's a kindred spirit because I know, you know, we're we're obviously very interested in sort of the European culture and and that side of things, but we love learning about all the other, like every culture too, it's, it's about finding those, um, universal human traits. Right. And, uh, I definitely think Alexi is a great, uh, example of maybe like the right way of like feeling great about the culture that you come from and wanting to interact with other cultures, just, uh, 
phenomenal, phenomenal man. Oh, absolutely. And then everything he was talking about, about getting back into nature and getting out of the cities and how hard it's been in the, the coronavirus pandemic, getting uh, all locked down. It, it was nice to see him out at uh, what looked like a kind of a rural place. Uh, he, was, he was at his bathhouse, I guess he was saying. And uh, yeah, nice to see he was able to get into the outdoors and uh, uh, into something that uh, he, he obviously loved so much. For sure. It, uh, no, just great, uh, great talk overall. And I think really in line with a lot of the things that we try and do on our show. Yeah. It's always neat to, uh, talk to these like artists and, uh, I don't know, cool people that, and find out that they have uh, a lot of the same ideas and values that, that we do. Yeah. So another big thank you to Alexei for joining us and uh, for speaking with us in English. Uh, our Russian certainly isn't uh, nearly as good as, as his English. So another big thank you to him for, for that. And uh, we really appreciate, as you say, getting to, to talk to uh, everyone we do. But, but uh, Alexei, it was, a, it was a great conversation. So big thank you to him. Absolutely. And hopefully we can have him on again sometime. Absolutely. And hopefully they get out touring uh, once this lockdown is uh, is done. Uh, fingers crossed that they'll uh, they'll come to our neck of the woods uh, or yours listening. Yeah, I mean, their concert could be, be nothing other than just a great party. Like, good folk music, good uh, jaunty tunes, and yeah. No, it'd be a great time. Well, they got plenty of, uh, of concerts with actual audiences on, on YouTube or like videos from their concerts and stuff. And it does look like a great time. Uh, although to, to tide you over there, they do a whole bunch of, uh, they have them up on YouTube, these, these live concerts. Uh, they had one from their kind of 17th anniversary that was like three hours long. So yeah, it's basically like a, almost their whole back catalog right there. Probably not quite, but it, yeah, quite, quite something that, uh, that video. So. Lots, uh, lots to check out. We'll have plenty of links in the, the description, uh, certainly a link to their channel, but also some of our favorite videos we were mentioning, uh, Oi Dusia, Oi Marusia, as well as uh, Once Upon a Time on a High Hill. I think those two we were both talking about uh, quite a bit there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't wait to go back to uh, watch that at, with the knowledge of what the story is about. Exactly. Uh, us with our uh, uh, not really being able to understand the lyrics properly all the time. It's nice to hear the, the story direct from the source. That's awesome. Well, I think that's it for us for today. And uh, so before we leave you, uh, again, we'll remind you if you'd like to support the show, the best way you can do that is on our Patreon. We give it exclusive updates to our patrons, just a little more of a behind the scenes look into the show. We also offer early access to our episodes at this point, And uh, I think that's uh, that's been fairly popular as well. And uh, yeah, so that is definitely the best way you can support us if you'd like. And if you'd like to connect with us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the links will be in the description here. So feel free to connect with us. We love having conversations about our, our work and, uh, and the show and everything uh, kind of around that. Um, and if you're on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, hit the bell for notifications. Uh, it's uh, definitely a big help to, to get us uh, a little bit more reach when, when we have more subscribers. So that's a, a, another easy way you can uh, help us out if you like. And uh, we'd also like to give another shout out to Grimfrost, uh, our favorite source of Viking apparel and uh, modern products, authentic reproductions, uh, things like that. They even got stuff like beard oil and uh, plenty of other cool things. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're wearing uh, their, their shirts if you, uh, if you see on YouTube here. Um, and if you're a fan of the show, we're, we're sure that you can find something you'll like. So go to Grimfrost.com to join the horde. And with that, I think that's everything. But uh, Dan, is there anything I'm forgetting? Well, there is one thing, and it's the most important thing. And that's to thank you all for listening and to go out and find the myth that we're living. This has been the Northern Myths Podcast. Thanks for listening.